All right, folks, we're back at it. Episode 14, Patrick Gale's coaching show. You can see the man himself wearing his nice quarter zip. It's like he's coming right behind him. Coming off with two wins on the road out of three. The Albany State Golden Rams getting it done heading to Savannah. It's Coach Patrick Gale. What's up, Coach? What's going on, JR? How's everything? I'm blessed. Highly favorite. Uh, countdown to the, to the birthday coming up here. Uh, about ready to travel to your old stopping grounds, New York. So it's all good, Coach. Hey, man, I, I got I to gotta call family, tell them to give you a nice welcome. Yeah, Coach. Hey, look here. I, I, I'm going to cut the trip kind of short, though. No, we, we got the Nets on Thursday, the Nets on Saturday, then the Knicks on the 5th. But, you know, we have different plans. So I'm not going to be in New York the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> What is your birthday, JR? Tell the people when your birthday when your birthday is. 311. Okay, that's what's up. 311. On, on, on the court and on the field. That's and what's up. 311. 311. Because coach, that's math, coach. You love math, coach. 311 that's, is 14, coach. That's I love that. I love that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 311. I love yeah. that. So that's why your number is 14. Yes, sir. That's why I wore 14 for my birthday. That's awesome. Well, happy early birthday, man. It's always a blessing to to see another birthday. No doubt, man. No doubt, man. You know, it's crazy, Coach. It's crazy world. This thing getting to be in your late 30s is a blessing in the world we live in today. <laughs> with, Absolutely. With the, with the stuff we deal with, we leave our houses every day. Let's, 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 let's be Absolutely. Real. <laughs> Absolutely. I was originally living in your house today. I, I mean, it's, it's that's why you got to stay prayed up and – that's why you got to look forward, not backwards, because before you know it, man, you'll be in your 40s like me. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Holding on. Holding on a tight grip. <laughs> now, Coach, the coach, does coach these younger, younger men keep, keep, keep you young, though? I know it gives you some gray hairs, too, but does it keep you give young? gray hairs. They give you gray hairs. You know what keeps you young is seeing them get through the woods. So it also reveals yourself. A lot of times when I talk to my young guys, it's like I'm talking to myself 20 years ago. So it 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 makes you understand, man, how dumb we were back then and how smart our parents were back then. And all I can do is kind of tell them things that I wish I was told back then. And sometimes you are told by your parents, but you don't listen to your parents because you feel like they don't know anything. And they're just, you know, an older version of you. We we love phones. They're just the older phone of you. But it's the same thing. They, you got their DNA for a reason. So it, it keeps, it humbles you. It does. It definitely keeps you young, but it humbles you because it makes you realize how immature and how foolish you were back then. You know what, Coach? God says a lot on the show, man. You know what? For me, a lot of, a lot of dudes my age don't like being around like elders, but I do. Because my dad's an elder himself. He's only 85 this year. Been around my daddy, his friends from his organization, man, it's like the knowledge I get just from sitting around with them at the crystal down on Northside Drive. <laughs> like getting their coffee. That's right. That's right. They, they country country breakfast to crystal. It's dogs I get them four hours without it to them talking, man. It's one of a kind. So I love Austin season when I'm at home and Austin go sit down at Christmas with, with my daddy and his friends, just soak in knowledge, man. And I, I love hearing the kind of first hand accounts of history of Atlanta, the world, our country, the global sphere, hearing them talk about being different speeches and different things of different things that we know in history, they were a part of it. You know, it's it's funny because um, when a lot of people talk about, you know, our civil rights leaders, you know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, um, I always say, well, have you listened to them? You can read about them. You can watch interviews, documentaries, whatever. But have you really listened to any of Malcolm X's speeches? Have you ever listened to any of Martin Luther King's speeches? Just listen to what they're saying and and really kind of let them speak to you. Let them speak to your spirit. So we have to, you know, listen to our elders and just shut up and let them speak to you and let them speak to your spirit. And I think we would do so many things in advancement of what we're going through if we followed what we always did. Our, our ancestors always had the elders speak, the young people listen, the young people do, the elders point and direct. And we have gotten away from that. And you can't tell me 
that you know anything about life when you haven't lived as long as someone that has and has been through different things and seen different things and understand what's going to happen. And you're because you're full of testosterone and you feel like you know better, but that's the body tricking itself. The mind can't do anything without the mind. And I've seen people go from strong, active to deteriorate because their mind deteriorated. And that's the sad part that we don't appreciate that. No doubt, Coach. You know, I say uh, the elders have been my everyday, man, teaching me how to how to be. The elders are whole hand today. I say I'll tell them my show. My elder group around me is why I am whole hand today. They've taught me how to be a man, gave me the, the road map. And do I go about it sometimes the wrong, the, not the right way because I'm a little bit different? Yeah. But <laughs> but the baseline is still there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean we gotta we gotta respect our elders and we and, and I know what it is, it's ambition, but it comes down to ego. And you know, just just reading scripture, you gotta understand not to idol not to have false idols. And our biggest idol is our ego. We don't even realize it. You know, we we do have other idols that we don't even realize that we're worshiping, but the worst one that you can worship is ego. And God has a response to that, and it's called humility. And if you read, you know, Book of Job, you can read, you know, uh, any book in the Bible. You, he, he humbles you. He will humble you. No doubt, Coach. And Coach, it's about that, man. Uh, you know, your team, man, you know, you know, it was funny, Coach, you know, watching the game with, with Pops here, just seeing the team battle on the road. Because we talked about this year, having to grow up and be mature, um, having a lead like you had. Going to overtime, getting down to OT, losing the first time in the game, but still having the mental resolve to actually pull it off on the road, you know, at Edward Waters last game of the season with them playing the season as well. So are you. Uh, and seeing your young young guys step up what they did, Coach, that had to make you feel happy knowing that, hey, the road's been a, a bucket for this year for you guys. Well, I'll be honest with you, JR. We approach it as a must win. We, we knew we could not go into the conference tournament on a two game losing streak. Um, so we, you know, coach white and I approached it as a must win and the young, the young guys responded. And at the end of the day, yes, we, we would like to have won, you know, without having to go into overtime, but the bottom line is that we won and we are playing a team on their home court, their last home game of the season. They're, you know, college basketball, man, is so, so competitive. You're not going to play a team on their home court, be up like the way we were at halftime and not expect them to respond. And they responded in a great way. Uh, Coach Huff does a great job with his guys. He had a key guy out. I had a key guy out. So we just battled, man. And, you know, we were blessed enough to come out with the victory, just like, you know, we were blessed enough to win, you know, on the road at Fort Valley, another hostile environment, another team playing very well going into the tournament. So, you know, every coach, should be going in, in, into this tournament feeling like they have a chance to make a run. That's how good and how deep our conference is. Yeah, because on this time of year, records don't matter no more. It's uh, zero zero. It doesn't it's, matter. Records it's, don't it's, matter. It's, it's matchups now. Just, just just look at the CIAA first round. Record don't matter. Um, it's this is the best time of year. Uh, I love late eight, love uh, uh, late, late February, uh, March. This is the best time of year. This is what you go through all those preseason workouts, all those you know, all the preparation. You know, uh, you you want to see your young people, your freshmen and your sophomores, kind of grow up. You want to see your seniors step up and play with pride. It's my favorite time of the year. And coach, you have close to a four roster there about one guy, but this is close to four you've had. A long time has to make you excited with a few days off to get ready for Lane, which I call the Nick Exodus Jackson down I forty. <laughs> <laughs> the Nick Exodus Jackson Lane College the Dragons. Uh, you pretty much have a good full roster almost here as you get ready to play the Dragons of Jackson to Tennessee down there in Lane. And oh, well coached by Coach Turner. Um, they they this, this Lane is a team. You know what they're gonna do, and they are gonna do it to you. So you got to be ready. And when we played them at their place, uh, they they were very tough. They were very tough. So 
you know, I'm sure they're excited about their matchup with us as we are, you know, excited about this opportunity. And, you know, it's time to, the records don't matter. It's not on anybody's home floor outside of uh, Savannah State. So let's get it. Yeah, because I've been stories about going down the lane, college from Tennessee State, because there ain't no two hours away from Nashville. So I've been yep, on that right, campus yep, right there. many a time Close. or stopping heading to Memphis, see my boys in Memphis too. I was about to say it's close to Memphis and it's close to Nashville. So Lane, Lane Jackson's in a nice spot, man. Lane, Lane is always, you know, a, a challenging trip for teams to come in there and, and try to beat them. They're they're very well coached, very tough team. Now, coach, I'm gonna tell you a little funny story about TSU dynamics here, coach. Why you love this? We ask people from West Tennessee. Our our doubts were playing Memphis. So nah, are you are you Jackson, Brownsville, <laughs> Millington, Covington? Which one are you? No, don't lie to us. Nah, I said, nah, you agree from Memphis or you from somewhere else? They all gonna play in Memphis, coach. I, hey, I went to school in Memphis, so I know exactly what you're talking about, man. It's funny. <laughs> but but I will say this, man. Um, I, I when I went to Nashville, um, when I used to uh, go to school in Memphis, man, I thought Nashville was a beautiful city, man. And East Tennessee is is beautiful side. It's another it's like another side of the world compared to, to Memphis. So you know, Tennessee is a great state, man. But there's two sides of the world when you go from from Memphis to to uh, the coach, other side of the state. Thing, it was John City coach for ETSU. Coach, it's funny. I decided I said must have shirt shoes on to be served. I'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> that threw me off, coach. Like, huh? Must have shirt on to be served. <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's crazy, man. But hey, man, we both been around a little bit. We talking about elders and you know just getting older. We both been around in our twenties, haven't we? Yes, we have, coach. It's, it, but it's all because it's a great game. We both played basketball and football, man. Because I think this is the, this is what he teaches you who you are, man. Gives you that sure. grounding. Because coach, like I told you it's off there, coach. Like I said, I learned about the slavery, how we got to where we are. Right, we we grabbed Jamaican blood and others like. Uh, my dad's from Guadalupe and having said that Barbadian stuff in him because the point of a finger on a boat trip is just that simple. And like I said, coach, four years old baseball. I, I saw up there. I don't understand why the guy from this guy from Curacao talks a little different than me. Uh, the guy that talked a little French got that high T, um, <laughs> that high T. So, like, you know, so the other kids from the Dominican Republic. So, my dad's like, yes, you all are brothers. Just that's right. That you got separated by a boat trip and a pull of fingers, son. That's, that's right. Why they, that's why. They, that's why y'all look the same, but talk different. That's right. Four and years that, old, coach. Four years old. I talk, I'm but but you know what's funny, Jr. That's why. Okay, so if you can go back to four year old Jr. What do you usually do as little children when you come around other people that you don't really know? You don't say a word, right? Great. You just check them out. You just observe. As adults, we should be doing the same thing. If if more people would just say less and just watch, watch what you do, because your actions are gonna speak more than your words. And you know, I, I I have to quote, you know, scripture again. There, there's power in the tongue. You yes. know, if we would just learn to be very direct and very purposeful with what we say, instead of just saying anything, because what comes out of your mouth it speaks about you know what's in your head it speaks about what's in your heart and if we just just be quiet and just observe and judge off of what we observe instead of just you know well i heard this and you know somebody told me this about you so i don't like you or somebody ever told me this about you so you cool no you got to you got to observe you got to watch people you got to let the actions speak and you know i'm big on that I'm big on, especially when it's somebody that has been in that environment before. You can learn something just by shutting up and listening and and watching. No doubt, Coach. And I must tell you, man, getting that lesson at four years old has taught me the rest for the rest of my life. Like I, I now know. I knew at four years old. Well, our kids don't don't know what I know about who we really are to each other. You know, at four years old, because I said it was like weird. Like they talk different. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I knew it was a different language. I'm like. But we all had a glove and a ball that could we could smile and laugh. And I know what he, 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 he's the saying. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, it, again, life's lessons, man. It's cool, and and that says a lot about your intelligence. That at four years old, you picked that up fast. Because yep. when I went to school, you know, in Brooklyn, growing up, we I had friends 
that were from many different nations. So I knew about a lot of different cultures. And honestly, I'll be honest with you, JR, I kind of struggled going into college and, and um, you know, just seeing kind of one or the other culture. I'm used to multicultures. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't stereotype people. We knew your ethnicity, you, we knew your nationality. We understood the different cultures, especially, you know, Jamaicans. Jamaicans are, 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 are saying is out of many one. We, we respect and we know different cultures. There's so many cultures that have influenced, you know, the island of Jamaica. People don't even realize that. No doubt, Coach. It's so, it's so important, man. Like I said, sports is a heck of a teacher, you know. Exactly. <laughs> like I said, I was playing sports at four years old. So I've been in sports for 32 years of my life, long, long 30, 33 years of my life. So sports has been a part of my, my rearing and my grounding, and it helps set up everything I've read in books, that I've been taught by elders, and, you know, understanding that that's that, that principle. We, we're, we're all brothers. We all come from the same place. It's like, I was trying to learn that that concept has been a little harder, but once you're when you're around it and deal with it, you see it for what it is. And I think that's what's good about you know my first was baseball. So with my birthday being in March, coach, I got turned four to March, so I had to wait till four until so I put what was baseball <laughs> in, in ninety one. You know what I'm saying? The same year I met Anthony Mason ninety, which led me to Tennessee State, as you probably can imagine. So like. All those things, so, 90, 91 for me was a, a year to really help form who I am today. And, you know, um, thinking about this time of year in the tournament, that the teams that are close, the teams that respect each other's cultures, the teams that kind of embrace their role individually, but respects their teammates' role, you know, as a whole, those are the teams that's going to be successful from here on out. No doubt, Coach. And I said I look, I look forward to coming down there on Tuesday, uh, seeing that game. Because I'm claiming that you're gonna win Sunday. I'm claiming the game is lame. I'm claiming well, that listen, now, Coach. Listen, listen, man. Listen, Jr. Stakes are high now, so <laughs> you can't you can't be claiming it now if you ain't doing what if you ain't living right if you ain't doing the right things, Jr. <laughs> so forgive your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for your enemies because come on, the stakes are high now. But but now nah, we 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 we're excited, man. We're excited and we're looking forward to it. And our faith is strong, our belief is strong. It's zero zero. Um, judge us now with 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 these stakes. Judge us now and how we respond. I'm I'm proud of my guys because throughout all this adversity, we have never quit. And 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 that's a life lesson. It's bigger than basketball. No doubt, Coach. That's definitely right, Coach. So we can leave it on that word, people. Uh, Coach Patrick Gale, episode 14. It's more than basketball, people. We cover a lot in this 20 minutes today. <laughs> it's worth it, and though. If if all you're worried about is just a basketball, you 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 in the wrong place. This is this is uh ordained because uh, we we are just uh creatures that were created by a higher power for a bigger purpose and we're like like you said jr we're all connected and it's not by no basketball it's it's something greater that connects us no doubt folks coach gale show episode 14 what we'll talk to you down the road 15 out is our ac tournament down in savannah georgia the port city